Yeah, yeah, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Finance United Podcast. I am your host, Eleni Bradley, and I just want to say thank you once again to all of the supporters. You are absolutely great. Everything that we've been putting out, you guys have really supported us, and I couldn't ask for a better audience. Just to tap into the social media platforms, you can find us on Finance United. That's going to be on YouTube. That's going to be on Instagram. Facebook as well. Please like, subscribe, and comment on our YouTube page as well as our Instagram just so that you stay updated and we can get other guests on this show so that we can provide great value to you guys. And um, just keep the subscriptions and the views and all of that stuff coming on Apple as well. It really helps us out. And, um, you know, the main thing is we want to make sure that we could bring value to you guys as listeners and Um, We really appreciate you once again. So uh, our last podcast was with my man Aaron Lohman, and he's back. That's how good it went. But uh, (laughs) And from us talking, he kind of, you know, put a battery in my back to get these other guys that are on here with us today. So, um, you know, we have a – we definitely have a star-studded episode, and – I thought it might be really good, especially with everything that's going on right now in the job and the climate, to get these guys on and kind of talk about today's topic, which is managing health and wellness while on the job. So um, I'm going to let these men, I'm going to let these gentlemen introduce themselves. I'm not going to do all of that because I, I'm, you know, I, I just want to. They're, they're, they're good, you know. They're, they're you know, good with the introductions. I heard, introductions a, little, I heard a little doubt in your voice when you guys talked about us having, you know, having us on the show. I don't appreciate that, man. No, 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 no. I name dropped the hell out of you guys. Like, I, I always do that. He's like, oh, I don't know if they'll do it. Where yeah, I, I, listen, it's it's very humbling to have you guys on. When I first started, no, seriously, when I first started this podcast, I said if I can get Mike Cunahan, Aaron, oh, now I'm introducing you guys, but if I can get Mike, Aaron, and Jay on one show, like I put that in my head. Mm-hmm. I said if I can make that happen. It's a blessing, and now it's here. Yeah. But I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves, if you don't mind. Well, what's going on, guys? Mike Kunan. Um, I've been a cop for man, going on 14 years now, and rookie. Damn yeah. it! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird to say that. I still feel like I got like five years on it. I'm still, you know, dealing with some stuff. But hey, we're here. We're grinding. I got six years left. Yeah, man. Clocks are ticking. You want me to go? Yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah. Um, Jay Lacayo. Uh, the real jump man jay um been on the job 16 years now um, i'm on that countdown clock as well four left uh i don't think i'm gonna stay a day later uh don't um, know what you on that yeah mm-hmm. and you know i'm just happy to be here man next to a great group of guys and uh hopefully we can uh you know add some value to the show you know absolutely what's going on aaron Lawman, aka a huge fat loser uh, I have the smallest arms in this room right now, these two guys. But uh, yeah, no, listen, I'm super pumped to be with these two dudes. Like these are two dudes I, I look up to, admire. Like no joke, Mike paved the way for a lot of us who are on social media, all that stuff. True indeed. And uh, Jay's just awesome, man. Like me and him, we, you know, we rap all the time. Like uh, on yeah, the, true, I, yeah, for real. So, uh, oh, and I have 14 and a half years, Mike. So. <laughs> Rookie. <laughs> Me and you both. Yeah. Me and you both, as we talked about before. Now, what I want to say is nobody in this world has everything figured out, and everyone has their own situations. But these men here, they definitely have paved the way to show us with such a demanding job physically, mentally, and emotionally, there's no excuse for not taking care of ourselves. No matter what, they have made the time and the effort to make sure that they're on top of their games. And that's why I brought these guys on because I think it's very important to have balance in this profession because if you don't, you will break down. So that's what we're really going to deep dive into today. And um, is this the first time you guys have been all together on a podcast? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. first time. First time. I think the first time I met Aaron was at uh, the first Fit for Duty Mm -hmm. uh, with Mike. Yeah, And then me and him did a podcast together, but like, Zoom. Yeah, it was Zoom, man. You know, then, yeah. COVID-19 style. You know? Oh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me and Jay did a couple together re- yeah. recently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is the first time with all three yeah, of you guys. That's correct. Yeah, collectively on one show. That's amazing. Yeah, man. <laughs> all right, thank you once again. Thank you once again. It's going to be dope. So 
let me ask you guys, what? how did you all get into fitness? We could go around. I know, Aaron, you, you explained that a little bit last episode. So uh, I just want to tap into that. Yeah. Uh, you want me to go first, Mike? Or? No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was always active, uh, you know, martial arts when I was a kid. I uh, played high school sports. And then um, I got on the job at like 22. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, I, I saw myself, um, like my first couple of years on the job, you kind of get consumed by the job. Right. You know, you, you know, you're trying to learn the job. You're trying to collar up. You're trying to, you know, be proactive. If that's the type of, well, that's the type of cop I wanted to be. Right. And then um, I noticed myself getting a little, like, out of hand. You know, I was eating those bodega sandwiches. Mm-hmm. And then, the Chinese you know, food at yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just yep. poor diet. Um, and, you know, obviously with, you know, tour adjustments and things of that nature, you know, you don't get the best rest. So, um, I don't know. I just kind of woke up one day and said I wanted to dial in. So, um, you know, stuck to – originally, I just stuck to, like, compound lifts, you know, back squat, bench dead. And then um, I have a cousin who was um, on the job in Virginia, and he started talking about CrossFit. So, mm. I was like, what the hell is CrossFit? And he was just like, I think you got a gym in, the, you know, the city that you work in. So, you know, I Googled it, and I walked in there and kind of been hooked ever since. The only reason why – I mean, I like CrossFit is because uh, – there's things that I hate doing, and they'll just program it for me, so I don't have to think about it. I kind of right. walk, I kind of just walk in and okay. go through the motions. Whatever's on the board, I do. You know, I prefer not to look at it because back then, um, you couldn't look on your phone. You had to just walk in the gym, and then right. you know it's on the board, and you just got to do whatever's there. Yeah. So, uh, but now they have like True Coach and stuff like that. You can look on the phone, you can kind of cherry pick. But um, just you know, the constantly varied functional fitness is where. Like I see the value in being a police officer because it's it's um you know it's part of the job, man. You know if you got to run the block or you know like in, in a situation like Mike where you know you can be driving down the conk and then you know some dude starts fighting and you got to hop out and do something. That was so, a wild story. You know um you know it's stuff like that, man. And you know I saw guys on my job getting hurt. Yeah. You know like just couldn't tussle with big dudes and they were getting their asses kicked. And I said, nah, I didn't want to be that guy. So. That's how I kind of got started. I think that's the most benefit from being a cop standpoint. I think yeah. that functional training and that, you know, that imam style workout, that high intensity stuff is the most beneficial for as much as I hate it. Yeah. But yeah. It's the most beneficial for, yeah, for real. a cop, you know, but I started training, dude, I started training at the age of 12 and I just never stopped. But I was wow. always like the bodybuilding routine, like, yeah. or f- f- training for football. And that's really started. And then uh, I got hurt playing football. I couldn't play anymore. And I just kept going. I loved it. You know, it's something I fell in love with and. It was always like a release for me. It was always like a, whenever I was stressed or anxious, so I was I was able to go to the gym and forget about my problems and just let it rip. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, we talked about it last week, but pretty much I was fat. I was <laughs> overweight. I let, I let the job consume my entire life. I was depressed, all that stuff, and I had a nightmare one night. I died at work, and at the same time, I got jammed up, and I realized that the job wasn't as much of a priority as it should have been in my life, like it was, and I put was putting everything on the back burner. My fitness, my family, all that stuff, and to put everything in perspective, and I just never stop. Feels good, and not only physically, but like mentally. My my mental clarity is so much better now that I started working out and exercising. Like nothing bothers me anymore, like it used to. I used to be the most negative, yo, <laughs> most negative person you ever met in your life. Yeah. I know you like probably people don't believe that, but like legit, I was like a wild, like a crazy person. I think yeah. that's part of the atmosphere is being a cop, bro. To show yeah. many negative, pessimistic people. Yep. You yeah. know, it's always the odds are stacked up against you. You know, it's because a lot of the times they are, but you know, you got to play the hand you're dealt and roll with the punches and yeah. try to be positive, man. Yeah. Having a positive, positive mindset sets changes everything. Why do you guys yeah. think that it's so prominent amongst police officers to be <clears throat> negative? Maybe it's not all police departments, but well, you on the job. You know, you see people at their worst every single day, mm-hmm. you know, and now you compound that by, you know, five years, six years, seven years and so That's on. That's true. You kind of just, yeah. you you know, you, you become a product of your environment, yeah. you know, so. You kind of get more and more jaded as the years yeah. go by. And desensitized. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you ever notice, like, if you go out to a bar, right, and there's a bunch of cops, cops make some, like, hella morbid jokes. Mm-hmm. And if you look at people around you, they'll be like, oh, They're shit. They're just looking just around. Like, like, yo, what's wrong These with dudes these are crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, um, you just kind of, you have to pay attention to what you're letting affect you right um another thing i found out through fitness is like you meet guys like this and you end up in a room like this yeah and then you know mike throws events or or like you know um aaron does the meathead militia stuff so it's like it's dope man he you know you you're around like-minded people right and that kind of uplifts you a little bit because you know you know we like i said we we come to work and you know not everybody's a nice guy so right. you know to get that release and hang out with guys that are you know have the same mindset as you i think creates a positive mindset you, you are know? you are the company you keep yeah 
Absolutely. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Show me your Sometimes friends and I'll show who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes Absolutely. you don't have a choice of who you're hanging out with, who you're working with that day, whatever the case is. True indeed. You still got to be positive about mm -hmm. it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I feel like whenever you start making progress, that's when you start to see things around. You start to shift as oh, well. Dude. When you hang around those people that are just stuck in that same place, they it, start to move backwards. Not only and, that, but they will do anything to keep you. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And people, absolutely. And people are easily influenced. So mm -hmm. people are more likely to, you know, concede to somebody else's opinion to fit in. True. And then they ought to be like, try to spin somebody else. So mm -hmm. it's tough. Yeah, you know, I made that transition. I was the person who let everybody else around me affect me. Now I'm the guy pushing back on everybody. You know. Yep. Yeah. I, find I mean, at, f at first you want to fit in, dude. You want everybody to like you. You're, you know, you're a new guy, and then you kind of find your lane, and you, you know, you stay yeah. in it, or you fall victim to your, you know, your surroundings. Yeah. yeah. And how how much do you guys feel that the fitness aspect actually translates to the wellness and the mental? No, oh, dude. <laughs> I mean, there's studies that show, you know. Oh yeah. Every it's working out is almost like taking an antidepressant. Yeah. You know yes. what I mean, it produces the same uh, endorphins and all the chemicals in your brain, and um, the the benefits mentally, forget physically, mentally are almost endless. Absolutely. Yeah. I get more. Listen, yeah, the physical ben the benefits have been awesome. You know, my physical transformation is great, but my mental transformation is way better. Mm -hmm. And every day for me, like the major reason I go, yeah, yeah listen, if I miss a week, fine. Uh, I, Physically, nothing will change, but mentally, my my week and my day is just so much different. Like, just going out and accomplish something for that day and getting it done, like you feel so much better. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, I need that endorphin high, man. Yeah, yeah. I, that. <clears throat> yeah. I think making it making it part of a routine daily is a huge. Like, just that alone. Forget actually going to the gym and all the benefits of that. Right. <clears throat> But the benefits of having a regimented day, like, all right, I'm going to take an hour and work on me. And during that hour, I'm going to think about, you know, how I can improve myself or what I could do next or anything, you know, and you're working solely on yourself, you know, and you get to have, forget all the nonsense. And cultivating on. discipline to do something yeah. that you don't want to do, mm -hmm. you know. And see, that's the thing. I think that a lot of people being at the job do does have wild hours. You know, I think a lot of people, they try to use that as an excuse to why they can't get certain things done or why their attitude is crappy mm -hmm. and they stay in the same. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, but you got to figure out where, where these people are allocating their time. They'll take the time to go to a bar, right? That's true. Right? They'll take the time to go hang out and do that, but they won't take the time to go to the gym and, like, improve their physical well-being, which then translates to your mental well-being. I mean, mm -hmm. it's priorities, you know? Yeah, That's what it comes down to. There's a lot of guys that drink. There's a lot of guys that smoke. Yeah. And they both cost money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what I usually do to people when they're like, yo, I don't have time to work out, I go, yo, let me get your phone. Let me see your screen time. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. And they're like, they get all sensitive, you know, Ooh. but that's the truth, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to try that. <laughs> yeah. Not about me. working out. Listen, you guys, after this episode, I have no excuse. Like, I, I, mean, I, 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 I feel like fading to black right now, being surrounded by you guys, y'all cut up and stuff. But um, I agree. I agree. I think it's all about prioritization. And um, as I spoke about on one of the past episodes, I feel that a lot of people, they'll sit down, they'll watch Netflix for hours. You know, Netflix and chill. They'll, they'll, they'll sit down and they'll watch a bunch of movies, but they won't put any type of investing or they won't invest in themselves mentally. They won't invest in themselves physically and they'll just blame it all on yeah. the job. Because it's hard. Well, it's hard to wake yeah. up every day and do it. Dude, That's the problem. There's a quote. What is it? Work, don't work eight hours for somebody else and, and not work for yourself. Yeah. For yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, I mean, most people took the job because they want to help people, right? Everyone right. has a generic yeah. answer. You put so much time and you prioritize helping everybody else. Or, or and working and and put do working for the city, and you put yourself and your mental and your physical health and your family on the back burner. You know that's why there's so many police suicides, there's so many divorces. Yes. You know how so many mental health issues is because yeah. everybody's neglecting themselves. You yeah, know? yeah. And those those two things that you mentioned are things that I definitely want to talk about in okay. this episode because I feel like amongst our job it just runs rampant, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really rampant, especially in times like right now. How how are you guys hoping? <laughs> excuse me. How are you guys holding up? With what you feel is about to happen out there. Oh, dude, there's just bracing, man. Yeah, it's gonna be a long summer, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, me and Mike were talking about that. Like, <laughs> it's gonna be a long summer, man. Yeah, yeah, long summer, brace it, take it one day at a time, like That's every it. day, and then like you just gotta make sure that no matter what happens, you still make that time for yourself, and you don't let it change the person that you are. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? Like, That's there's it. gonna be all this shitty stuff. Just don't God, lose can't, yourself. You can't lose I think yourself it's in it. Important to stress that. I feel like everybody has this like underlying underlying sense of anxiety right now. It's not oh, just oh, you. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, everybody yeah. gets into like a funk yep. where they, you know, it's like, oh man, my whole summer's gonna be ruined. Something yeah, I'm not gonna be able to go on family vacations. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna be do this, 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 whatever. It's everybody feels the same. So yeah. especially after last year. Yep. You know, everybody's mm -hmm. thinking that it's gonna feel exactly the mm -hmm. same. It's gonna be worse. Bro. Getting, yeah, I think so. 
I think so. Yep. Everybody's tense. You know, nobody wants to plan any vacations, like you're saying. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that right now, with what's to come, it's very important to be able to sit down, focus, plan out as much as it is that you can so that you can have balance in your life. Because if not, you're just going to go insane. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're going to go absolutely Balance, insane. that's the key word, man. You got to make sure you have that balance. Yeah. You yeah. Gotta, you got to find time to allocate for you, you know? Right. And get that release from whether it be the gym. I mean, obviously, best bet would be to be the gym. You get your most bang for your buck for like working on you. Mm-hmm. But it's important to have hobbies like outside of the job, you know. Yeah. Outside, even outside of the gym, like I, I enjoy fishing, just being outside and yeah, camping yeah. And you get some crazy stuff. fish, man. I saw you with a couple sharks and all yeah. that. And gets crazy Jeez. out there. It's the, it's the outdoors, man. Right yeah. there, <laughs> I tell people that all the time too. Like yeah. when I go talk to roll calls, like yo. People think that, like, I only care if you work out. Like, I don't care if you never lift a weight in your entire right. life. Mm-hmm. Just find something outside Else, this yeah. job. This, yeah. is, this is not your you life. You have to. You just have to find. I tell people, yo, take a finger pain thing as an adult. <laughs> just something Do something. Else, man. Yeah. 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 How do you break through to these guys? Because I feel like another thing is a lot of guys are very stubborn. They just want to st- stay in their ways. You can't really help them until they get to the point that they feel, all right, it's time to transition, kind of like you, right? In a group atmosphere, it's t- it's super tough. Cops obviously have that mindset. But if you, when I catch guys one-on-one or I have a conversation via message, I ha- I've had the ability to change a lot of people's minds, which, mm-hmm. you know, is good. That's uh, how it usually happens, like off to the side. Uh, yeah, they won't yeah. do it in a, in, yeah. in a, yeah, in, in a group. I, how many people have had mock me in, a, in groups? Yeah. And then they'll DM me they'll a couple DM days you, later. Yeah, like, yeah, what are you man. talking about this? Yeah. yeah. That happens all the time, man. Yep. I just feel like they're, they're they scared to come forward. They don't want to fit that's in. That's it. Right. You know, and you at gotta, some point, they got to be afraid. Not afraid. Not afraid. You got to be the man out. So we... You and I, we have 14 and a half. You have, what, 14? I'm, I'm coming up on 14. Coming up on 14. Coming up on 16, right? Yeah, coming up on 16. Yeah. Now, is this something that you guys had to figure out? Obviously, with you and I talking, Aaron, um, from the time that you came onto the job to now, how much do you think that you have progressed as far as being able to balance your health, your wellness? Um, I feel like I'm my best self right now um, as far as, like, in shape, mentally, uh yeah. Physically, spiritually, I feel like I'm my best self right now um, because I took the time. There was a point in my life where I was like super miserable and um, I needed something to get me out of that rut. Mm. So, um, you know, did some like mental health stuff. Just like, you know, I sat down, I spoke to somebody and, um, you know, they kind of got me on the right track to figure out like, all right, well, this is what you need to be doing. You need to be working on yourself and, you know, some... So I'm just like, you know, deep down looking at yourself, figuring right. out where the problem is. Because what happens is a lot of people, they, they want to point the finger at other people, but they don't look at themselves. So you, you can't help anybody or you can't be um, of any value to anybody else if you can't really help yourself. So, you know, I started within myself and then kind of started to change from there. And I just try to change different things uh, in my training. Like if I sucked at running, I just threw in some more running. Mm. Um, if um, <laughs> good for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, That's what, do you have I need to I do that, question, man. Hey, how do I improve my mile and a half time? You uh, run. You just run. run. Yeah, yeah. Run. yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you do the things that you suck at because everybody will double down on the things that they're good at, mm. but they were they'll, they'll they'll go above and beyond not to do the shit that they suck at. Mm. So just start doing that. You know what I mean? And that shit builds character. I remember once a week, I would do. Uh, um, these like shitty ass like hour workouts and it was all movements I couldn't fucking stand like burpees <laughs> on the assault bike or you know shit like that and just you know like a 60 minute AMRAP or just meant like callousing your mind right you know what I mean and just getting to that point where you get uncomfortable with the uncomfortable and then after that life is easy dude you know if you can sit there do a shitty workout once a week and somebody says something to you on the street it kind of just rolls off you mm. you know what I mean you just gotta you know Prep your mind, and then the body kind of just follows after that. That's right. Know? That's right. And I think that's kind of ironic because I feel that for most people that are on the job, that the more time goes, the more lax you get as far as taking care of yourself. Mm-hmm. And for you guys, I feel like the more time has gone up, the more you have been taking care of yourself. You know, you're probably at your peak right now. Oh, Maybe. yeah. Listen, I feel I'm the best I've ever been, but I'm not satisfied. You know what I'm saying? Like, always That's, improving every yeah, day, yeah. no matter what. The day you That's start it. lifting, is you'll never be satisfied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> From that point on, you're never happy. Yeah. You know? How about you? I think I, as a whole, I'm good right now. You know? Okay. Like, I'm not in the best shape I've ever been in, but my life as a whole is the best it's been. You know? Healthy relationship. I got a, I just bought a house, a dog. Congratulations. Car. Everything's going good. Nice, you know? Nice. I'm so not. going together. Yeah. 
So, I mean, it's, it's, it's about allocating your time. It's yeah. not like, it's not all about the job and it's not all about the gym. It's, I'm doing stuff I enjoy. I'm with somebody I care about. You know, I'm, I have a job. I have a good position on my job and you know, things are going well. Yeah. I think that's the key too. I think it's all about what your why is, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, you have to know why you're doing what you're doing. You can't just look in the mirror and say, oh, all right, I want to look like this. I want to look like that. Even mentally, you know, you have to know. You have to set a goal. You have to focus on it. You have to focus on who it's for and then go from there. Mm-hmm. I think it makes things a lot easier as opposed to trying to look like somebody else, be like somebody else. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, what what is your why? What makes you keep going? What makes you keep striving? Oh, man. See, I always wanted to – the gym was always a way for me to improve myself. Even when I didn't have, like, a direction, Yeah. the gym, I knew I would get better somehow if I just kept showing up to the gym. Yeah. And it just kind of morphed into something else, you know what I mean? And now it's like I, I put myself in a position where it's people are like kind of looking, looking at me for like motivation and some kind of inspiration, and I, I, I feel like they're looking at me, and I don't want to let them down. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, stole, stole. I agree with that too, for real. Like I, I don't want your, your story is hands down the most inspiring oh, absolutely. story. You know, St- absolutely. Because, because, dude, no, it, like, no, hear me out. Because I've been fucking working out since I'm 12 years old. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't have to overcome. You know, I wasn't 400 fucking 25 pounds. I was, I've been 200 fucking pounds my whole life. <laughs> you know? To maintain that discipline for all, for all that, that time yeah, period dude, is... Maintaining it is easy, bro. Losing it and then building back up is hard. Well, I mean, your dream. Yeah. Yeah, your no. Dream. Listen, my why is always my kids, always my family. That's what it'll always be. Like, obviously, like I have, like, little whys in there. Like, listen... I want to retire at 20 years. I want to have, like, something else going on. That's why I started training people mm-hmm. and all this other mm-hmm. stuff. I just want to have something else not to do besides this, so that's my other why. But right. that also falls into family, you know. But that's it. My why will always be my family. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, legacy, same thing. Like, mm-hmm. my family, you know. Um, at, you know, at some point I'll be a father, and, you know, I just want to be a good example to them and, you know, and just other human beings that have been around me. It, you know, you never want to be the guy. To, to, that you know, someone brings up in a conversation, it's like that guy's a dick. Yeah, you know, like yeah, yeah. You, just, you know, you want to be a guy that was like fair and treated people like they were supposed to be treated. You know, it's it's very simple to be a a, a good human being. Right. It's I think it takes more energy to be a shitty person than it mm-hmm. does to be a good human being. You know, and then it's just just kind of like putting things in in order, right. making sure that you have some kind of. Um, like a system, you know what I mean? I think a lot of people kind of go through life like a plastic bag in the wind, man. And then when they see somebody else doing good, it's like, well, why the fuck is he doing so mm-hmm. good? Yeah. He's, you know, he's got a routine. I look at guys like Mike, I look at guys like Aaron, like they kind of, they, they, they got shit lined up and they do things a certain way. So that kind of pushes me to kind of stay on that type of line and, right. and figure out like, oh, well, if these guys are doing it, I can do it. But most guys don't look at it like that. Mm-hmm. They'll start hating sure. on dudes for no reason. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like. Weak. Yeah, it's Look like in because and if you really think about it, I think they're just when it comes down to when somebody else hating on somebody else is because it's them um, pushing on pushing their like insecurities out on them. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Because somebody else's shit is lined up like, oh, so, you know, they're thinking in their brain there has to be something wrong. with it. We all have insecurities. We're all messed up in some shape, form Absolutely, or fashion. Yeah. But if you figure out a routine or a system, you know, you kind of deviate from that. So. Just get your shit together. You won't have a problem. So, dude, I was guilty. I'm guilty of that. I've been guilty of it. As soon as I made that change, my fucking life changed. Ten, yeah, dude. Ten, yeah, ten, yeah. Like when you and I had that conversation yeah. about manifestation, bro. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've I've always been that type of person, but to hear him say that and kind of co-sign it, I'm like, all right, well, I'm not crazy. Yeah, yeah tap tap into that a little bit. I mean, I was always the type of guy that was like, oh fuck, fuck this guy. Why is he doing so good? Why has he got this? Why has he got that? What's he doing? But if you change your mentality and you're oh, like, yeah. yo, sorry, if you change your mentality and be like, yo, if this guy's doing it, I can do it. Yeah. Good for him. What's he doing? How could I, how could I pull information from him or, you know, mirror what he's doing or right. do my own version of it or yes. something, yeah. you know, and you got to have a positive mindset and figure out what you want to do and just go fucking do it. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. Simple. Isn't that simple? And be positive, man. You got, and uh, dude, it's all like hippie talk. Like I'm going to manifest this and good karma and good juju, yeah. all the, putting all this positive shit. That in shit the is universe. real though. But it, nah, facts. It, it, it is, is real. As stupid is. as that shit sounds, trust me, it fucking works. It works. But it's, it's so hard though, because like I said, at the beginning, I feel that so many people 
are negative. I feel like there's more negative people than positive people. Because it's Especially easy. on this job, bro. You're surrounded Especially by negative. Especially on this job. You just said it's easy to be negative. Mm-hmm. It is. Dude, do you know how many times like I'll catch myself I'll being like negative or going like down a negative train of thought, and I like literally got to pump the brakes and be like, mm-hmm. yeah, what am I doing? Yeah. Why am I thinking like this? And then I got to... I made a post about this the other day about how like I feel like a bad person like all the time. And I got to really think about it and reflect. Most people do not do that. Mm-hmm. Most right. people take that easy road. It's everybody else. It's a right to be negative and... They just fall into that. Self awareness is everything. And make yeah. no mistake, it's okay to like wake up and have a shitty day. Yeah. And not be, you know, uplifting or motivating, mm-hmm. whatever word you want to use. It's okay to, to exist in that space. You just can't stay there. Right, right. right. I think a lot of people get caught in that rut and they never get out of there. Mm-hmm. That's and true. Just, yeah. It's important to re- realize when you get into a funk and then find a way out. Yeah, write yep. the shit, bro. Yep. Get out of there. I think it's really tough as well because, like you said, a lot of people on the job tend to be negative. Because of what it is that we see out there and our sense of humor, what's really hard is being able to detach yourself from those people because you feel like you're the eyeball. I feel like the job is high school with guns. One hundred percent, high school with guns. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So you got the coolest people; they're all negative. Now you got to step to the side and be in your own lane. That takes a very strong mindset. What? Who are the coolest people? What are they doing? Well, what everybody else considers to be cool. Right. Gossiping. <laughs> Gossiping, talking about all the latest tea, they call it, the juice and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. You know? None of that. Yeah. Dude. Once you separate yourself from that, life becomes so much more better. Yeah. yeah. Once I realized that, I was on a, a better path. I Yo, legit, I'm always like the last person to know anything that's going on on the job. Uh-huh. Like anything so like that. Yeah. So am I. I don't do the group chats. Nope. No. I, I tell people know- straight up, don't text me. Don't send me. <laughs> like I, rem- like, I remove yeah. myself from every single one. There's one that I can't get out of because it was made by somebody like an Android or something. Yes. And I can't get out of it, bro. So people with not- the Androids, you fuck it up because that green bubble comes in yep. and creates. And I hate it. Uh, yep. I hate and then you, it. you can't exit yourself <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you don't do group chats and all nah. that. Just, I don't get involved with gossip. I don't get involved with. I don't. Dude, honestly, it sounds messed up because the camaraderie is important. Right. Like I don't hang out after work. I go do my own thing. I make it. I'm point the to same. Go to the gym. Same way. Same way. And I go. I go to work, and that's work time. And I go right. home, and that's home time. And not for nothing. I'm not. I'm not trying to look down on anybody that does stick together. And, no, it's you know, important. They have their own. Their own clicks but it's and all important that. to do the right stuff. Like. I don't, I don't know. All those I'm people, not say what you gotta, you gotta think about it. Like all those people that you're with in your circle, are they elevating you? Or are they keeping you where you're at, or yeah, bringing you down? Exactly. That's, that's what it. makes a difference. That's what you gotta. And those out. people could also work with you, and that's fine. Like, he's a cop. He's a cop, right? Chris, the guy who works with me every day. Like, me and him talk about everything every day. I will never get sick of him. You know what I mean? Because right. we're on that, we're, we're that same type of person. That's all. So if you're building each other up, yo, cool, hang out with that person as long as you guys are using each other to build each other up but if those people are holding you back and holding you down and mm-hmm. like poisoning your mind you gotta step away yeah so people that aren't strong people that aren't able to say all right you know what i gotta step to the side and do my own thing what what is it to it like what how do you go about doing that you know it's tough man everybody's different man yeah. you just gotta you know you gotta make sure your house is in order right mm-hmm. i always tell people that don't worry about what the next man's doing make sure yeah. your house is in order because it's easy to get dragged into that shit yeah. you know where you know, you're in a group chat. This one says something about this person, and all of a sudden, mm-hmm. you start chiming in. If you if you take a step back and just look at half the shit people say about other thing, like other people, you you, you catch yourself because you 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 like want to jump in. Yeah. Like, Wait a minute, what the yeah. fuck am I doing? Listen, who am I to judge? If somebody's if somebody's talking shit to you, they're talking shit about you. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. And that's when I had to absolutely. catch myself yeah. and be like, yeah, let me just remove myself and just kind of like you know. Not 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 like detach myself. I shouldn't say that, but I'm just I'm limited to yeah. what type of energy I give people. Absolutely, that's it. You know, because uh, I don't want to. You know, I don't want to be antisocial. But um, as soon as somebody starts going left with some talk, I'm I'm out of there. Cool. The reason why I ask that because I've actually had people DM me like, "Yo, listen, this is what I want to do. I want to go the highway." So I'm writing a bunch of summonses, but people around me they harass me and da 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 da. da. And I'm just like, listen, man, you just got to know where it is that you want to be. And the reason why is because once you get there, like those same pe- those same people that are talking about you, they're not going to be about anything. Yep. They're not going to be making moves. So you got to do what's best for you at the time. You know, I know at the time it's hard because you feel like the unpopular guy. You feel like you're not fitting in. But this is necessary evil, you know. Yeah, I'd rather be ostracized for being me than, being, than faking being somebody else. Right. Yeah. So it is what it is. You know what I mean? If you have a path that you, you know, want to take, not everybody's privy to take that ride with you. So, 
You just, sometimes you got to leave people in the mm-hmm. dust, and right. I'm perfectly fine with that. You're going to outgrow a lot of people yeah. on the way out, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you definitely do, for sure. <clears throat> yeah. Overall, how do you feel morale is? What? what? Oh, <laughs> man, dude. I, yeah, it's tough. It's, it's hard to say, man. Um, like, we're on different jobs, but I kind of feel like it's the same. It's the same. Mm-hmm. It's the same. It's I the feel same. like um, locker room is, is, has become a very awkward place, man. Like, you, you used to be able to crack jokes. And now if someone says something, there's like that look around, you know, like <laughs> yeah. who's here when I made this joke or, or you know, then there's somebody that kind of comes out of left field and says some off the wall shit. And then you got a bunch of fake woke people running around. It's, oh, my God. It, oh, it's tough, bro. Yeah, uh, morale. Who, who said something about being woke? That, was it you? Yeah. I know, <laughs> I, I, know, I know people in my circle that are like that. And uh, it's just, it's, bro, listen. There's just a way to be realistic and a way to not be realistic. Just have a realistic perspective mm-hmm. about things. Like, I try to think of th- about things from other perspectives. I try to balance that. I, I talked to you about this last week. Like, I try to balance everything and think about everything from multiple sides. And there's just some things that make sense and some things that don't. You don't got to just be extra for no reason mm-hmm. just because just to be extra is s- stupid. Yeah. It's a fact. Yeah. So what are your schedules like as far as fitting in the gym, fitting in mental wellness? Um, I'm a morning guy, so I work steady nights. Um, I work, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I work 6P to 4A. So um, I usually get home from work. I knock right out. Some people can't go straight to sleep. I can. Um, I knock out, then I kind of like wake up. Um, I wake up around like 9.30. I don't sleep very much on the days I work. Um, but, yeah, I wake up like 9.30. Um, I, I do the same thing every morning, and it has helped me exponentially. So I, I'll wake up. I have this little like journal that I have, mm. super simple, and it's and it's uh I'll write a quote in it, and then um you know I'll do uh it's one quote, and then I kind of gauge how I'm feeling when I wake up, and I'll just write that shit down. What journal was it? Um, I just got a, a blank memo book. Okay, I didn't do that gratitude journal. I have that, but I I just this is just something I kind of came up because yeah. I'll I'll write everything I do during the day in it. So if, I, if right. my workout felt great or whatever, I'll write down the workout, put it in there. Um, I use a self journal. Okay. It's a 13 week journey. It breaks everything down. So at the beginning you put your uh your 13 week goals mm-hmm. and then from there you put in your weekly goals every week. Got gotcha. you. And then daily. Yeah, yeah so that, that helps out a it lot. It gives you it gives you some direction. So this is the only Definitely. reason why I even do this journal is it holds me accountable. Absolutely. So you know, like I said, I you know, I wake up, go through um, you know, write down whatever, hit my workout, throw that in there, and then um I give myself a moral report card at the end of the day. Mm. Which that helped me out a lot too because I, I found myself at one point like quick to anger, like quick to snap on somebody, and I had to like check myself, mm. like you know, like so what happened on this day that made me feel this way? Well, I noticed all those days I woke up, I wasn't really taking self time, so right. I would. You know, a lot of Absolutely. people wake up and they roll over and they grab this thing, they grab their oh. phone. and that right there can change the whole trajectory of your day because yep. now, absolutely, you know, you know, for instance, the Minneapolis situation. You roll over and you start your day with that, mm-hmm. your whole day's fucked. So you kind of got to just leave that shit. I don't even put it on the same side of the room anymore. I try to keep it out my room. Yeah, like it's a way. So yeah. when I wake up, I don't roll over and just the That's first right. thing I'm doing is that. You know, I kind of stay in the book and then, you know, go through my little quotes and make sure my mind is right. And then I hit my day. Yeah. And at the end of the day, when I'm driving home, I got like a 20-minute commute, decompress, you know, evaluate my day, figure out what did I do good, what did I do bad. You know, I'm just holding myself accountable. It's funny that you say that because I used to keep my phone right next to my bed along with my Bible. And it was to the point where I was touching my phone, picking up my phone before opening the Bible. Yep. So I put that on the other side of the room, the mm-hmm. phone on the other side of the room to the point where I started leaving it outside so that I wouldn't be tempted. Because there would be times I'll open up my Bible and I'll be looking at my phone like, oh, am I missing this notification? Yeah. Am I missing mm-hmm. that notification? I was like, yo, let me keep that out. Yeah. So I think that's a strong Put it point. on Do Not Disturb. That's what I started yeah. doing. And I was like, that's like a new thing for me this year. Just, as soon as I hit the crib and I'm getting ready to go to bed, Do Not Disturb. I don't want you, you to really, be bothered. You really got to tap into yourself before anything else. Tap Too in. many people are connected to mm-hmm. the outside world. And that's how you end up getting influenced and, you know, it, it, your mindset starts to change a little bit. Yeah. Because think yeah. about it, right? I mean, your timeline is full of half good, half bad shit. But what do we tend to focus more on that bad shit? Mm-hmm. Yep. And, yeah. That's what's most entertaining. Yeah. That's the one. Unfortunately. You know, yeah. It's true, though. You know? Well, how about you, Aaron? Your routine. 
Four thirty a.m. My alarm goes off. Uh, I don't. I'm going to bed at that time. <laughs> I get up. I eat. I pack my meals for the day. Uh, I get in my car. I take my pre workout. Go to the gym. I try not to touch my phone until I'm like doing cardio. This way, I rush, I rush through my my lifting, do my cardio. Then I get on the train, take the train to work, take the subway downtown, work, and then on the way home, usually I write. Uh, like I'm, I'm trying to write a book, so. I'm doing that on the train, and then when I get home, oh. I do some of my personal training stuff, and then uh, usually when I get home, I usually only try to take an hour for me, and then the rest of the time is family time. That's it. Gotcha. That's cool. Cool. My day is very boring. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You're right. No, I mean, it really, it really is, man. I'll, um, I wake up at like 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning every day, uh, drive into work, I have like an hour commute, do the work thing, eat the same shit every single day. <laughs> Uh, actually, somebody had made a comment. Like, hey, how do you eat the same thing every single day? I mean, it's just, it's just what I do, man. I mean, not days where I mess up, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> gym every day after work. Um, hour drive home. And I go home, and it's home time, dude. And I'll answer some emails while I'm home. Spend some time with the girl, the dog, and go to bed by like 9 o'clock because i got to be up at you know, 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. So how much time is that that you're spending with you, the wife, the dog? Um, I, don't know, I usually get home. A few hours, three, four hours. So oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. That's really good. And she works nights, so it's like we see each other in passing for a couple hours, and that's it. Excellent. Excellent. Now, you guys are very prominent on social media, right? How much does that influence your daily lives as far as the positivity, as far as the negativity, as far as your routine is concerned? Um, I feel like in order to grow a decent following, you have to be very tapped in. You know, you have to give a lot of thought into what it is that you're posting. I mean, you have, what, 180? 180 like 12 million. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got that blue check, too. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I lost, man. Once <clears throat> once I, I, I got into a, a period of time where I started talking about more cop stuff, and I lo literally lost 10,000 followers. Really? Yeah. Mm. That's so, crazy. So Unreal. That's what it is, man. So how do you, how do you balance <clears throat> that? Because, like I said, I feel like... You have to do a lot of um, self-reflection, figuring out mm -hmm. what it is that you're going to post, come up with content. That's not easy. I don't think no. people realize how hard that it's is. It's not. Um, I don't know about these guys, but uh, I just kind of figure out a, a, a little system. And then, if like, there's days where I won't post. If I don't feel like it, I won't. You know, if I need to dial it back and make sure I'm good, then I do that. That's right. You know, um, that's just how I do it. You know, um, I podcast and I do all that stuff as well. But if I feel like I need to walk away, I just walk away, man. Mm -hmm. You know, this doesn't define me. You know, it's part, it's, it's part of who I am, but it doesn't make up me as a whole. You know, right. it's created a lot of opportunities for me, you know, as far as, um, you know, contracted work and, and, you know, like side gigs and things of that nature. And, you know, I, I use it as a tool to help me and connect me with other positive people. Um, but if I don't feel like being on it, I won't be on it. I don't, right. I don't force myself to do stuff I don't want to do. Yeah, I have I have days, weeks where I won't do anything on there just because I get I get so frustrated. And it's such like a toxic place, man. <laughs> it oh, is yeah, super bro. toxic oh, place, especially bro. being a cop, dude. Yeah. Pe yep. You get people people from all over the world talking shit to you, <laughs> literally all over the world. And um, you know, you, I, according to some of these people, I'm a racist white cop. You know, I fit, I fit uh, the mold. So I'll do you one better. I'll do you one better. So he'll he'll get that. Yeah, uh, you're a racist white cop. I'll get the sellout. Yeah. I'm not black enough. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? You're not yeah. black, you're blue. I get that. You know right. what I mean? I'm pretty sure you, you get the same stuff. Of course. It's, of course. Yeah. You know. I know you've had issues with family members, right? Or, yeah, absolutely, or man. Friends. Having just conversations. And then, like, uh, there was an issue about the blue line flag, man. And, <sighs> like, so my, my, my family's, like, split. It's, like, military and police. And then there's, like, a couple sprinkled in yeah, perps, yeah, like, yeah, every... Yeah. Fa like every family has, right, like right. you know, mm -hmm. and um, I remember you know family group chat and my cousin's working out and there's like a blue line flag in the back and they're like, oh, what's that about? What you mean, what's that about? Half the people in this group are cops. Mm -hmm. What do you not know about? They're like, nah, but you know, you know the Trump flag, the blue line flag, yeah, like, social hey, media, and Twitter, go. Twitter said this, and I just see like, are you serious, bro? It, you know, you, you get that. And I think that's when I have to, like, really remove myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there, there, there'll, there'll be somebody. I could I have screenshotted convos with dudes that are like, you know, you're a sucker, you're a sellout, you're this, you're that. Why? You know? Yeah. Yeah, where I heard that the most was last, was it June? Yeah, June. June, the, the riots and all that uh -huh. stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah June. Yeah. 
I felt like we were dealing with a lot of shit. And for whatever reason, I stopped and heard what this one guy was saying to one black cop that was standing next to me. And I was like, oh, man, like I feel so fucking bad for yeah, this no. guy right now. Yeah. I feel bad for black cops like more than anybody. Like, yeah. legit. Because, yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, it gets tough, especially when you work in a neighborhood that's predominantly the same culture as you. Yeah. But um, like you guys said, it's all about your, your mental and how strong you are. Yeah. The real ones understand there, though. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The people that kind of poke the bear, they're just they're just trying to solicit a response from you. Mm-hmm. You know, right. not everybody. It, it, it's sad because like uh, a lot of the time they'll just glorify like negativity or like negative, you know, negative behavior. So you know, most kids they think the only way to get out the hood is either you know you got to be a rapper, sell drugs, or, or, or play a sport. Mm-hmm. Well, you know. What about just going to school, trying to, you know, getting a job? I don't know. Figure that out. Right. You know, break and the cycle. Break the cycle. Exactly. Yeah, like yeah. Try to change that. And I think, you know, um, you're considered a square if you don't think the way they think. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm the son of two immigrants. So, you know, when they came to this country, they just wanted to, to for us to succeed, you know, here. And that's why they left where they were from, to come here and have a better life. So, I had that pressure on me. So, I knew that, like, all right, well, you know. As kids, we do dumb shit, but I knew at some point, I was like, all right, well, I got to dial it in and, mm-hmm. and get to that next place. I never really wanted well, to. Dude, a lot of people don't have, like, the nuclear family isn't really what it used to be. It's not. I know you right. come from a different situation with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But generally. Bro, but I was like a, I was a perp, like, for real. Yeah. Like, so, I but get it. And that's really, part of the reason why. Most people in that situation, they don't have their dad or their mom or whatever mm-hmm. the situation is. Everybody does dumb shit as a kid. Yeah. But a lot of people have their parents to reel them back in and be like, hey, asshole, don't do this. If you don't have that, you're just going to keep doing dumb shit. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's where, yeah. that's where you know, by the time you're you're already introduced to the cops and you're in, have inter- encounters with the cops, you know, is it the system's fault? You know, the system, parts of the system are fucked up, but you know, the nuclear family is so important. Where by the time the cops get involved, man, it's too late. Yep, that's true. That's true. Now, Aaron, <laughs> the unit that you're in, if you mind explaining it a little bit without going in. I mean, oh, yeah. So what we do is we have a bunch of different people. They have a, a various array of specialties to try and help cops at least alleviate some of their stress by taking care of their financial wellness. We have a financial planner who also ret- does a retirement coordination, like guys are genius. That's great. Uh, there's actually two guys that That's do huge. it. They're both geniuses. Yeah, big, real big. They have myself and Chris who do a lot of the physical fitness and training stuff. We have the peer support program, which is cops in every command who provide resources and let them know what our office has going on. Um, we also have a yoga instructor if you're into yoga. And uh, what else we got? We have people that work on policy to change policy. Like they change that medication policy. Mm-hmm. So like now there's like certain medications that you're allowed to take, you know, psychological medications you're allowed to take on the job. We have a psychologist that works in our office oh, that's on big. behalf of the cops. That's big. So like that's completely separate from the medical division. Yeah. So pretty much what she does is she brings in cops. It's part of a critical incident debriefing program. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you see some wild shit out there, um, we have – this is mandated by the attorney general too. So we have a lieutenant and a bunch of cops. All they do is they get sent these referrals for these crazy jobs, and they watch the body camera videos, and they're like, wow. this." They determine like, okay, this is crazy. Uh, the psychologist is going to call them down. They come in. All, all it is is like a checkup. Yo. She, like I said, she works for the cops. Like I wouldn't be saying that if it wasn't true. I would mm-hmm. leave this. I would leave the unit in t- two seconds. Right. She cares. Like she just really just wants to know if you guys are all right. And like, hey, listen, if you're not, if you want to talk to somebody later, here's some options for you. That's it. We just want to start normalizing, like talking about mental health and like all the other things that go into it. Definitely. Like physical health and and finances and all that stuff. It all plays so much of a role in our, our lives as cops and people. So what do you think was the breaking point where the job said, all right, we have to do something? Uh, uh, suicides. It was mandated by the attorney general that we create this unit, 100%. I tell people that all the time. I'll go to roll calls. I'll be like, listen, the job had to pretty much was forced to admit that they were doing things wrong the wrong way for a yeah. long time, and they were forced to create this unit. But they put some good people in this unit to make sure that they that these people actually like care and like want to see it and help you guys. Right. Now, I, I was a little hesitant to ask this question. But I think that it could p- potentially help a lot of people. Um, I mean, I know you're not a, a therapist, but most people that might come to your unit, if it has been expressed that they want to hurt themselves, what do you think the biggest cause is? 
I think everybody who decides that they're going to commit suicide or think about suicide, their individual circumstances are completely different. There mm-hmm. are a whole bunch of factors. Obviously, the job is one of them. The stress of the job is definitely one of them. Yep. But family is a huge one. Finances is another huge one. And, like, to me personally, like, a lot of them are not, like, taking care of other stuff in their lives that they could be taking care of. I'm not placing blame on them or anything. But I'm just saying, like, if you start taking care of other stuff, like, other things become easier. And Mm -hmm. you begin to manage your life and manage your stress and all that other stuff. And I think one of the biggest things is the stigma around mental health and policing. Like, yep. it has to end. Like, it it has to end 100%. Like, we have to encourage people to seek mental health treatment. Definitely. Like, for real, you know? Right. And I think that the finance aspect is very, very crucial Oh, also. huge. A lot of people don't, they don't associate that with wellness. They should, because I know two cops who've gotten arrested and fired off this job for torching their own car. For release payments. <laughs> True story. Really? Yeah, because wow. they're stressed out about finances. They panic. They torch their own car. They get caught. They get fired. They get fired and Damn, arrested. That's unreal. Yeah, unreal. I mean, that's huge. That that I didn't even know they did that. Which I thought was dope. That the finance portion of it, but also too. I mean, I think everybody in this room has enough time on the job where, when we first got on, no one asked you if you were cool after you saw mm-hmm. something gruesome. That no, is no. Dra- that has changed tremendously. Like. Uh, I, Last year, we went to a call that was pretty nasty. And uh, I remember my lieutenant calling me like, hey, bro, you, you all right, man? You need to sit down and talk to somebody. Really? And that's the first time I think anybody has done it on the job. Just ask me if I was cool because it, it was a gruesome scene. And, you know, um, I was able to kind of like sit with it and, and kind of go through what I saw and understand. And and then, um, you know, I was good. But you, you never know, man. Somebody on that scene may have taken it a a different way and Definitely. you know maybe they're sitting there in their, in, in their thoughts and they, they could take them to a dark place but I know um, the last like I say like five years or so it has changed where they're, they're more concerned about mental health and that's huge man because I feel like you, you have to think about this man we, we see crazy things on a, on a like weekly sometimes daily basis and then we normalize it and it's weird. You're not supposed to normalize death. That's not something humans are supposed to see, you no. know, or like, you know, uh, somebody who's, you know, like a mangled leg. These things you're not, you're supposed, not supposed to, to see. see yeah. yeah. So now you extrapolate that by like 15, 16 years, right. you know, <clears throat> your mind and your spirit ain't right. So it you got to sit down. Yeah, it mm-hmm. compounds, man. And, you know, you got to make sure that your, your spirit isn't callous, man, because, you know, you can wake up one day and it may take something to trigger you and it d- to take you up the deep end. So you gotta like make sure you're doing those like those those like self checks. Or if you start to, I, I tell guys this shit all the time on the job. If you see somebody who's like a jovial, like happy person, mm-hmm. and they're walking around and they're like super to themselves and not really like who they are, check in, check in quick. Yo, that's the main thing that I stress to everybody. Yo, we'll rush to a ten thirteen in ten seconds to save somebody. Mm-hmm. We gotta check on each other every day the yes. same way. You're like, yo, so- you good? Like, you know. Like, we got to care each other about each other next to each other in the car and in the muscle room and the locker room like we cared about each other going to 10 This is a very unique yeah. time, I think, for police officers, man. And we need to do a lot more checking in on one another. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? one A lot of people, they crap on this job all the time. But one of the things that I would have to say is that when I was going through one of the toughest parts of my life, me actually opening up and talking to people that were around me is what got me out of whatever depression I was in. Mm-hmm. 100%. Huge. Bro. And I think that when people realize it's not all about us being tough, I know everybody, they associate this job with being a tough guy and being macho and all of that. But when you actually sit and you open yourself up to a lot of the people that you work with, people that you could trust, it, it helps. Not everybody's a professional. Sometimes you can only share certain things with specific people, but just speak. You never know. Yeah, don't never. bottle it up, man. You know? Now, what about relationships? How do you manage all of that? You got to find somebody that's not going to make your life miserable. Man. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. The job's hard enough as it is, man. Right. Find somebody that's going to make your life harder. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I think relationships definitely play a big role on health and wellness, especially mm-hmm. on this job. And going back to the finance portion, um, like I said, originally I didn't really think about finances dealing with the wellness aspect, but if you think about it, if people don't have good spending habits, habits. They'll go, they buy houses that they can't afford. Now, mm-hmm. you're buying cars you can't afford just to keep up with the Joneses. In turn, you have to bo- do a bunch of overtime. 
You can't spend time with your family. Mm-hmm. You can't right. spend time with yep. your family. It's a trickle effect. It's a trip. Once again, it compounds. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of people don't think about that. How important do you feel? I mean, it's pretty obvious, but um, how well have you guys been able to manage your relationships and how, what suggestions would you have for some of our listeners? Um, it's kind of like what Mike said, man. Find somebody in your life that makes your life easier or, or adds. Anybody who's, it, it's a relationship's like anything else, right? It's like, it's, it's, let's, let's equate that to like a bank account. You want to be with somebody who deposits, not withdraws all the fucking time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's a, that's well said. Keep well said. people, or like keep a, a, a person that's around you that, that, gives you that place of peace, man, that's very supportive and understands like, you know, we work odd hours. Um, you know, we, it, it, it's, and it's, sometimes it's, it's not ideal to be with somebody who understands that because right. it cuts in on their personal time. Definitely. But they have to be willing to sacrifice just a little bit to understand that. Like, this is your livelihood. This is how you provide, um, you know, for yourself, for, you know, your significant other or, you know, your family. So right. they have to be willing to understand that. And I think a lot of people get that shit kind of mixed mm-hmm. up because there's other things that come into play. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I mean? <clears throat> it's important to, f- to find somebody that adds value to your life. You know what I mean? And don't settle for somebody that's going to, you know, just suck you dry. You know, the, somebody that adds value or somebody that holds you to a higher standard, you know, that, could, that goes both ways. And, um, you know, somebody that understands it, that, you know, you're going to have to work messed up hours. Yeah. They understand the job. And, you know, somebody that, you know, has a work ethic, and hold, you know, like I said, holds you to a higher standard. That goes for friendships too, man. It's the same thing. It's the company you keep is the company you keep. Right. You know, and you are the company you keep. Right. Absolutely. I think that our schedules are very, very tough. Very, very tough to deal with. I know me, myself, when I work midnights, that definitely put a huge strain mm-hmm. on my relationship and um, definitely stressed me out, stressed her out. And um, honestly, I think a lot of people, they tend to put their issues that they have in their relationship on this job. I don't know how relative it is. Um, I mean, I do going and thinking about it a little bit more. I do think it is very relative because when you go out there and that's where I think your unit comes into play, just like you said, Jay, you see so many things out there in the street. You try to hold that in. You barely see your family. You get home, you see your family. And now you're trying to deal with what it is that you saw out there in the street. And now you're trying to take care of yours. You and yeah. yours, you know, and you're trying to be who it is that you need to be for your household, and it's very difficult. Mm-hmm. It's overwhelming, man. Yeah, it does. That's so, oh, sorry, go ahead. Not good, bro. No, that's what I was gonna say. Is like before when I said like, yo, you listen to all of us talk about our lives, right? Our lives sound boring, right? To a lot of people, they sound boring, but that's what prioritizing is. Mm-hmm. Like, if you have a family and you're stressed out by the job, and you you Spending that time where you should be with your family and you're going to the bar and you're doing all this extra stuff. Yes, yep. That's, listen, that all that stuff compounds. Like, I've listened to so many guys who are divorced who talk about their, their bitch of an ex wife or whatever. <laughs> but meanwhile, I know what they were doing mm-hmm. the yeah. entire time they were yeah. married. Like, some of this stuff is your fault. That is you, know a, I mean? you, that, you have to control yourself. You have yep. to. You have to hold yourself accountable. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And that's what I was saying before is like, there's some things that you have to hold yourself accountable for. And fix those things. You have to fix your own house. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Jay said, definitely. keep your house in order. Yeah. 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 I think infidelity is definitely one of those huge things that maybe I, I shouldn't be talking about, but whatever. Why not? It is what it is. Yeah. Um, it's very prominent on this job. I just hate the stigma that comes with it. It does. It, it, when you it, meet somebody, it's, it's you're like a cop. Automatic. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's about. automatic. Why do you think that is? I don't know, man. I, I, I never, I never understood it. I never got it because I know doctors that do, the, you know, that yeah, do that. I know yeah. lawyers. I know I think they're worse. people in, Do- people in every knowledge. profession I see yo, doing. Yeah. The nurses, yo, what's up? You talking about my wife? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just, I, I, I never, I never understood the stigma. I still don't understand it. I never will. There's a lot of stigmas, right? <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, I mean, it is what it is, man. I think if, you, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it. I don't care what job you have. That's right. true. That's yeah. a that's a character thing, bro. That don't got nothing to do with that's what you do for a living. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I think but, holding yourself to a higher standard than and setting an example for the people around you plays you know, that plays hand in hand with that, you know? Right. We're human, man. Like, you know, all humans are fallible creatures. Right? So the the only thing you can do is just try to wake up and be the best person you can be. Mm-hmm. Like if you don't wake up with any kind of maliciousness, like in your heart, excuse me, in your heart. 
I, then I think you're doing all right. Uh, some people kind of wake up and just they have it on their brain that they want to fuck somebody's life up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so there's, I there's, a lot, no, there's a lot of people we all like know bosses like that. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of human beings. <laughs> like, you know what? How can I make this person's life shitty? There's people who walk around like that, man. Yeah. You know, it's just just being a good human and and just put your best foot forward cuz like we're all going to humans are selfish creatures by nature. Yeah. How many people do you know will be in a burning building and will run down the hallway and knock on the door and make sure somebody's in this apartment? Hey, uh just so you know the shit is on fire, it's about to go up. Mm -hmm. Not too many people will do nah, that. You know what I mean? It right. it's you know, humans are selfish creatures by nature, but you know, it it, it takes a split second to just be like, all right, let me stop and think real quick. Right. All right, how's this going to affect this person? All right, maybe yep. I should I should chill out. And then that's the crazy part is you got a lot of these guys that won't own up to what it is that they do, right? And then they'll go and tell you not to get married. Protect your pension. Mm -hmm. You know, your life is over. Yep. And I'm not going to lie. Sometimes you hear that over and over. Like when I used to work on Midnights and I worked up with, worked with a lot of these washed up guys, you know, oh, listen, son, don't get married. You know, they'll take your pension. They'll suck you dry and da-da-da-da. And when you hear that over and over and over again, you start to think those things in the back of your yeah. head. And when you're working hours, when your girl or your wife is at home and- It puts that in your work, brain, man. And these, because these guys, the majority, a lot of these guys have been through it, you're thinking like, could that be me? Mm -hmm. You know? And it's it's very, very taxing to the mind to be surrounded by that yeah. all the time. Because you get like think, conditioned for it, you know what yeah. I mean? And then yeah. you go home and you're like, oh, what are you doing while I'm at work? <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. a fact. So I think that I think that balancing relationships is definitely very important. You know, a lot of people I don't uh, have you ever heard of guys that are on this job that actually rather stay at the job than be with their families? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. What what's what's that? I don't know. Yeah. You know, <laughs> what is that? I'm trying know. to escape something, man. Yep. That's what it that's what it comes down to. But like what are you doing to get yourself to that point though? You know I, I mean? don't know, man. You have to, there have I hope to I never something. see that day. No, I mean, no, I, mean I love not being at work. But yeah. like honestly, like yo, those are the guys who like get age off the job and they have a problem like mm -hmm. leaving the job, man. Like going to real life, and those are the guys that have a problem. Like, listen, we want to talk about mental health. Those are the guys who leave the job and they have nothing, it, nothing, mm -hmm. and they have issues. Yeah. And unfortunately, that leads to, to suicide. Also, you gotta like, you gotta learn how to balance everything, like you said. Like you gotta. Water every piece of grass in your yard, man. Yes, man. Mike says this a lot, man. Get yourself a fucking hobby. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I, you, you, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you you ask anybody in your commands, like if you ask them how their day goes, <laughs> it, I say like eighty percent of the dudes do the same thing every day. They go to work, they work a you know overtime or something like that, go home, sleep, and do the same shit all over again. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's yeah, no yes. like, hey, I do this, I ride my bike, I do there's none of that. Yeah. Right. There's a small percentage of us that do that, and then what happens is now you do that shit for 25 years or whatever. And now you just have this job. Right. Right. So when it's time to retire, you're just a cog in the machine, bro. They're going to take your, your ID, right? They're going to take your shield, dump it in a box, and somebody else is going to get that. Mm -hmm. That's so sad. When you simplify it like that, yeah. that's, that's what dude, happens, That's bro. why I made that shirt. Just more, 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 more than, than that. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. so I love that that's shit, bro. That's, that's all you are. You're and a cog in the, the eyes machine, of the city, bro. dude. You're just a number. Like that's I said, the job was my life for a long time. And I learned when I got jammed up that, like, yo, like, listen. It is not, mm -hmm. and they will replace you in two seconds, man. And yeah. Like you just, yeah. you need to take care of yourself. Like, love the job, hate the job, whatever your opinion is of it. They're not going to take care of you. You got to take care of yourself. Care period. Yourself. Yeah. Period. Especially in this climate. Yeah. yeah, bro. And I mean, I'm not going to get too into that, but yeah. um, I think you really have to have something else on the side you and start to. tapping in. You absolutely have to, just in case. Yeah, you just have in case. To. You have to because. We're all expendable, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of us. If and and then the the minute you think you're not, they'll do something to humble you. Yep. Oh, you'll yeah. get in trouble, and it will knock you off that pedestal that you thought you were on. But you got to you got to keep yourself grounded, and you can't show that you're doing well because somebody will go out of their way to fuck it up for you. Yeah. Trust, oh yeah. Trust me. Yep. Yeah. You know. Is that is that just people in general, or do you feel that I think it's more with, more with cops? More as a cop. Thing. It's people in general, but it's amplified. I think in it's this profession. I have a whole theory behind this, man. Oh, go ahead, let me hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Yo, I think a lot of people who become cops, <clears throat> and this goes into like a lot of things, like how they feel with what's going on in society and everything, and their views on things is like they feel like they became a cop, and what they did, that what they chose, was the right path. 
Like they're like, what I did, that's the way, that's the right way. And they really believe that anybody else who deviates from that is like cheating somehow mm. because they're getting rewarded for something that they're not doing and that the risk they won't take. So they're like, oh, this person's like cheating or this person like is going a different route. They're doing it wrong. So they mm. need to be taken down. Like it's like, it's really, it's crabs in the whole crabs in the bucket thing. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Aaron says this a lot. Uh, it, it, we tend to get this us versus them. Mentality, yeah. mm-hmm. and it's us versus us. It's us versus yeah. us. Yeah, it really is. It I really mean, is. He, he always harps on that, and I, that's that's one thing I like. I cling on to what he says. The minute you take your mind out of this us versus them shit, life has become so much more easier as a police officer. Right, mm-hmm. right. And a lot of people don't get that though. You know, it's a, it's a shame that sometimes when I'm out in the street, the way that I'm able to vibe with some people that I just met out there in the neighborhood that I'm serving, I can vibe better than some of the police officers or a lot I of the police officers. Yeah. I'm the same way, dude. For sure. Mm-hmm. That's wild. And when people say, "Oh, all this stuff is going because of the blue wall is going on because of the blue wall of silence," I'm like blue wall of silence. <laughs> what are you talking what about? You, like, what, yeah. what, what, blue, what blue wall of silence are Yo, you talking about? I had this exact conversation today <laughs> about how somebody asked me, "Well, what about the blue wall of silence?" And I went into a whole thing uh-huh. about, "Listen, that doesn't exist. A cop, a cop will rat you out or like mm-hmm. tell on you or make some shit up about you, yes, just to get a free donut, yeah. right? I'm gonna like, up, it, I'm gonna make up a shirt with a a wall that's blue breaking down, <laughs> yeah, mm. because it, there's no this it doesn't people exist. that are listening and you're not on the job. All that blue wall of silence nonsense that you heard from the early 2000s back to the 90s. That's gone. Yeah. It's TV. So, so cut it out. That's the TV that you're watching, and maybe people that won the job a while ago that knew somebody, whatever the case is. Cool. That's dead. I don't mean to bash. I'm not going to bash cops. I'll never bash cops. Yeah, no. But in the last 14 years, nobody has caused me more headaches in my life than other cops. Oh, true. Same, same here, man. We're no. our own worst enemy. Yep. I say yeah. that all the time. Yeah. But <clears throat> the thing is, we're not bashing each other. The thing is, we're bringing awareness. Yeah. That's what we need to do. We need to call out what it is that's actually happening in the precincts. And it's not like us sitting here right now is going to change everything. But this all plays into the same thing. Mm-hmm. Like, well, this all plays into mental health. Like, if you're yeah. trying to tear down every cop around you who's trying to do something and trying to elevate other people, mm-hmm. like, that affects their mental health and that affects the mental health of everybody else around them. Right. So, if we really cared about each other's mental health, we should want to see them succeed. And that's how I've always felt about Mike. Like, I've always, like, like obviously admired him, but like I've always, I've never been like a hater of Mike. I've always wanted never. him to like, you yeah. know, because if he's successful, people who are doing mm-hmm. like similar things are also going to be yeah. successful. That's right. That's There's right. got to be somebody before you. Yeah. Right. There has to be. Definitely. That was a dude. I, part of the reason why I started the whole social media thing was to break down stereotypes. Like, you know, mm. there's a lot of bad stereotypes oh, about God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was like one of the things I wanted to to contribute to the whole law enforcement society was, you know, trying to break down the stereotypes. You know? Yeah, I mean, I think it says a lot with the fact that somebody like you, or actually all three of you, but, you know, I say you because you have the most followers and you have paved the way for you to come on this show and be humble enough to speak. I mean, people probably see you and they're probably like, oh, this guy's conceited. You know, he's all buff and he's a police officer. He, like you said, yep. you probably have that cops, stereotype. Cops yeah. are the only people that say right. Yeah, but <laughs> I've, had, I've, had, I've had cops legit come to me and be like, yo, that guy Mike's a dick. I'm mm-hmm. like, actually, he's not a fucking dick. Yeah. Like, I, mm-hmm. I have heard that too. But yeah. I, I walked up to him. It was a, I don't know if you I remember. remember yeah. yeah, and mm-hmm. I was like, listen, you know, my mm-hmm. name is Lenny. I yeah. find this United. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, what's that about? So I gave him a little background and I was like, um, is there anything that you would give me a heads up on? And he gave me a few pointers. Humble as ever. I'm like, yo, where, these other people that are saying, yo, I heard that. Mm-hmm. You know, I heard he's the worst. I'm like, where are you getting that goes from? Back, goes back to what we talked grade, about before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> high school with guns. Yeah. There's other people on this job, too, that, like, people absolutely hate. That, like, I get along with on a personal level. I'm not going <laughs> to I'm not gonna mention them here because yeah. whatever. But, like, you talk to them person to person, and they're like a normal, regular person. It's right. just, like, these things that cops, like, t- talk about each other is just absolutely it's insane. Yeah. yeah. I never go off of what anybody else yeah, says. Yeah, no, never. You can't. Ever. You can't. Because that's your and that's their interaction with that person. Yep. I don't know what under what circumstance it was. We don't know. Or maybe it was fabricated in their brain that this person, you know, uh, you know, looked them off or something like that. Yeah. Right. Nah. I, I I need to be my own judge of character to figure out who's who. Exactly. I mean, for the yep. fit for duty that he reached out to me, I didn't. I was I was shocked. He's like, hey, bro, listen, we're doing this thing. Uh, it'd be great if you can come down and help out. I was um, like, I need you help. You know, man. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. And I'm like, oh, that's that's dope. Of course, I'll, I'll show up. Yeah. He didn't have to do that. Right. You know, he just. Say like, hey, bro, like, 
Hey, it'd be great if you come out. Absolutely. You know, like, and most people, I tell people that story, like, yeah, he, he really did that? Like, yeah, he did that shit. <laughs> Mike's my guy. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny, man. It's just, it's yeah. weird. It is. It is. I Same mean, thing, we like, create a lot of stigmas. You know? Yeah. And like, there's been times where like, He's had something going on, and he's like, called me or text me, and be like, "Yo, this is going on. You're in." But yeah, I'm in. Like, same thing. Yeah. Like, I, whatever. Like, I think people just don't realize that about people, you know, other people like that. Yeah, they don't. They don't. And it's it's really unfortunate because if we did stick together, I think that issues like suicide they would dissolve. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say completely because there's we're all humans. It would the improve day. for sure, though. I think if we got into more healthy habits, like. The platoon, my old platoon, when I worked in the Bronx, we'd go out on whatever nights. A lot of guys would go out every night, whatever the case is, after work. So instead of going out to the bar every night, let's go, you know, most precincts have a gym. Let's go work out for an hour. Yeah. You know, knock out 35, 40 minutes, whatever it is. Do that. And I guarantee you that bond will be stronger than going out and drinking at the bar. And you won't hate yourself at the Normalize morning. that shit. Yeah. 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 And that Yo, was kick each other's ass for an hour. Yeah. 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 Trust me. That, trust me. That shit will bring boost camaraderie and oh, boost yeah. morale. And I think, like I said before, the job did something very great with having your unit, the health mm -hmm. and wellness unit. But I think um, something that I thought of is, are you guys familiar with Clubhouse? Yeah. I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on Clubhouse. You're on Clubhouse. Yeah. Okay. I think what would be dope is if we had somebody like the three of you and even myself to get on there and actually speak about some of these issues with other police officers. I would. I don't know how it works. I'm on there every Monday morning, man. Yeah? yeah. 11 o'clock. Uh, there's a kid out of uh, um, VA. He uh, has, um, it's called One Last Org. His name oh, is, okay. Yeah, his yeah. name is Dylan. What's um, that about? It's uh, basically, it's like a suicide prevention. Um, oh, that's really? Not for profit. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, he's a solid kid. Young dude. He's like 28. Um, you know, kind of put the, the wheels on the ground, got it going. And then... Mm -hmm. um, you know, he created a forum where, like, every day, well, every Monday, eleven o'clock, there's like a there's like a guest, and we kind of go in there, and there's cops from all over the, the country, man. And just, oh, really? Yeah, and they talk That's about mental cool. health. They talk about wow, it's cool, man. Um, have you have you put this on your social media so other people? Yeah, he'll like it? tag me. Like, if I go on, he'll he'll like tag me. Yeah, right. and then uh, we got you know Frankie from Reps for Responders has jumped in on a on a few calls, and um, you know, just cops from all over that that kind of do the same thing that we're doing, right? The suicide awareness and and um, just allocating resources to cops who need it yeah like this is a place where we can kind of sit down have these type of conversations and um you know people actually benefit from it because you you know you'll sit there and there'll be a therapist in there from wherever like we were sitting in a room one week and it was a bunch of guys from um when the capital got stormed man and they were talking about what the hell was happening wow and i was like holy shit wow. man like they needed to be in that room to talk about it and guys were sympathetic and and um you know you could actually hear it in their voice man really? I, that, I think that's a great platform if it's used for the right Absolutely. Things, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, but that idea sounds dope, man. It's just if we could sit down collectively and get that done, I think that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. For those that aren't familiar with what Clubhouse, Clubhouse is, Aaron, you, you said you're not. I have no idea. People think that I know about technology because I have an Instagram page, but I'm really, <laughs> I'm really stupid. Like, I, I'm serious. No, no, no. Well, Clubhouse is pretty much a platform where you can create a room and it's full of moderators and you'll have a specific topic that you speak about and you can actually invite people into the room to hear the mods speak about the topic and the people that are in the room, they could actually come on the stage if you want to call it like Jay, yeah. like Jay. Um, and they can, you know, tap into whatever the topic is, ask whatever questions, advice. I think it's a, a very great platform, especially for us in law enforcement and especially for guys that are leaders in law enforcement like yourselves and on social media, so that the average person, I mean, we're all average. We're all, we're all human beings, like I said before. But so that people that might feel that guys like yourselves or myself are out of reach, they have that platform to tap in mm -hmm. and speak to us. Oh, that's and, I, great. and I think that helps normalize things. I think that can help normalize things. And people won't feel as tense with uh, maybe DMing you or, you yeah. know, it's an opportunity to talk in a group together. Okay. So, yes, we should I'm definitely gonna, look into that. What do you think, Mike? I'd be down for that. Yeah, cool. for sure. Cool. I'm, I'm always going to say yes. Mm -hmm. I force myself to say yes to everything. <laughs> yeah. I That's to something that I had to work on because yes, I would man. be yeah. like, oh, I can't do that. No, no, no. And I, dude, I, like, I have stuff like this, that. dude, I my palms still sweat. Like, yeah. I get nervous Me or shit too. like this. But forcing myself to do stuff like this and to do events and, to, dude, for me to do something like Fit for Duty, I've, 10 years ago, I never even fucking thought about it, you know? But 
forcing myself to get uncomfortable in certain situations has changed my life big time. And I think a yep. lot of guys would, would benefit from getting uncomfortable in certain situations. Absolutely. Absolutely. Even me having this podcast, the first time I heard myself on a mic, I, I just wanted to throw it. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't like hearing my voice. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, no, it takes nobody a, it, likes hearing it, voice. It, it takes a while to get used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like, uh, I don't know. But then mm -hmm. I just pressed the send button, and that was it. And yeah. then I was hooked, mm -hmm. you know. Um, one thing I do want to talk about is spirituality. How much does that play in your health and your wellness? It's huge for me, man. I, I, people, like, I, I get that a lot. Like, I'll, I'll get... um. A lot of people DM me or like comment on my stories. I kind of do this like mo like morning testimonial thing in my car, and they're like, "Oh man, it's super great." Fire, yeah. I've seen I, it. I, I wasn't always in that space, and then um, you know, you 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 get on this job right, and you be on the, you're on this job long enough, you start to lose friends, or or like you you know you have a conversation with somebody, right? I know a bunch of guys um from Jersey, and remember when that whole uh, they had that shootout in Jersey City. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yes. There's a guy that I know that responded to that call and lost um, a, a kid he went to the academy with. Oh, wow. And um, it was so weird because we had a conversation like the day before and it was like, you know, casual conversation that we normally have. And then, you know, like the next day uh, we had a conversation. He's like, yeah, bro, I lost one of my boys. And I'm like, oh, shit. And we had like a little conversation. And then I started to really realize, like, I think a lot of us take for granted that, you know, we we wake up. Right. We go to work, we put on this uniform, and then we expect to come home. And that's not that's not a given. That's true. You know what I mean? That's, it's not a given. I, I can't tell you how many times I've read a story where dudes are sitting in a diner and just a random ambush or just, like, sitting at a light. Somebody T-bones them. It's just random whatever. Yeah. You know, um, I, I just try to be outwardly grateful. That's one thing I, 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 I emphasize. Um, you know, tomorrow's not promised. So, like... Figure out whatever your whatever deity you want to believe in. I don't care what it is, Buddha, Allah, God, whatever. Hmm. Um, just be thankful that you're breathing because there's somebody in a place, be it up or down, that would trade places with you in a heartbeat to deal with the stresses that you deal with every day. Absolutely. And just the day to day bullshit that we deal with. There's a, a, there's a thousand souls that would trade to be where we're at. That's so I'm just very grateful just to be alive and to be like even in a room like this, man. Like this is not by chance. This is a calculated is. thing, something bigger than us is working that put us in the room at the same time to have this conversation yes, to talk sir. about this. So I just try to be outwardly grateful. Yes, sir. How about you guys? I mean, I'm not like overly religious. It's not like I go to church every Sunday, but I mean, I grew up Roman Catholic. You know, I, I think it's important to have some kind of faith and, and guidance, you know what I mean? Something to believe in. And, you know, I feel I catch myself like being ungrateful sometimes. And mm. it's like I, you kind of got to bring yourself back in and. You know, I'll I'll have like I got a long ride into work, so I'll have like times where I'm like, you know what? Just think about everything I have, reflect and, and reflect, and and just be thankful for it. You know, uh, whoever it is, I, I just thank them for everything I have, man. That's and that's something I took for granted for a long time. And it's like, even when I was going through shit, and I was like, man, I wish I had this, and I wish I had that. And it's like, you're still in a really good spot, you right? Know? Right. Could be a lot worse. You know, right. I've, I've been I've been to some really bad places and it's like dude, these people would kill to have a fraction of what i have yeah. you know what i mean what made you start thinking like that what made you start <clears throat> kind of checking in a little bit and reflecting and saying you know what i was just i was so depressed and miserable and i would have like i got it got to the point where i was having like almost anxiety attacks going into work because i was so really? miserable yeah because of just yeah the job yeah mm. and um you know, I just made the change in my mindset where I was like, I wouldn't, it was my reaction to, to certain problems and certain situations at work. Yeah. So I changed my response to those, to those things and everything changed, man. Wow. Wow. So you did a bad attitude. Isn't going to help a bad situation. It's not going to make it worse. I just put up a post about that. Like I think it was today or yesterday or some shit, but well said. if you're in a bad situation, dude, a bad attitude is only going to make it worse. Yep. Well said. Well said. How about you, Aaron? <laughs> He's like, <laughs> yo, I used to be a Sunday school teacher. I know everybody's surprised. Oh, wow. That. I would yeah, never guess that either. Listen, I, I, I've, re I've had a wild ride in my life, but I used to be a Sunday school teacher. I don't really go to church that much anymore. Like, I always find myself like, I push against authority no matter what. And I do the same thing. That's what my relationship with God is all the time. I'm always like, God doesn't exist. God exists. He reminds me, something reminds me that it exists. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's where I'm at with my spirituality and gratitude. Yo, that's something I practice every day. I preach that to so many people, especially when it comes to this job. Yo, you make six figures, 
to walk in the job. It's, mm-hmm. Yes, it can be miserable uh, as all hell, for sure. But you got to remind yourself, you get paid six figures almost to come in the door every day. Facts. You can do as little as possible, <laughs> right? Yeah, Listen, bro. I've had difficult jobs like... I was a lands like I told you I was a landscaper before yeah. this, like in the heat, like I used to be a plumber, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah I used yeah, to be a plumber for a while. Yeah. So and that's back breaking work, dude. So I, I can relate, man. Yeah, no, yeah. like no benefits, none of that. Like I never listen. Like I told you, I was like pretty much a perp. I was a loser. Like I never thought any of this would be would be possible in my life. So I remind myself of that all the time. Like, and I think other people need to remind themselves of all the good things they have in their life too. What they be grateful for, all this good stuff. Because, listen. If you keep focusing on the negative, more negative is going to come. And you got to mm-hmm. be gr- listen. The more I practice g- gratitude, yeah, the more good things come my way. Yeah, for sure. Right, right. I would definitely piggyback off of that. I have to say that once I started becoming more grounded in my religion and in my spirituality, that's when things started to develop more for me. Now, you guys, you're very, very fit. You're in shape. You're very. You make sure that you sit down and you know you get to work as far as working out and you, you know, getting your bodies on point. For me, spirituality has been one of those things that I've had to tap into every day, same time, same routine, mm-hmm. because that I feel it, it, it really establishes a foundation. And when I began reading the Bible and tapping in, tapping into it more, that's when I started to realize this is what you need to do. Like this podcast right here, this is what I need to do. And the real the, the reason why I realize that is because I'll go and I'll try to do other things, try to make money here, try to make money there, tap into this, tap into that. Mm-hmm. And it just doesn't work. Mm-hmm. But the fact that I know that this is my God-given talent and gift and this is what God wants me to do, this is why I'm sitting with you guys. Yeah. And this is why working with you guys will be able to grow this to mm-hmm. – God well, knows dude, what. Not only that, like you can go out and find other ways to make money. Yeah. But if you find something, find a way to help people and help improve situations, improve people's problems, not only will you be happy and fulfilled, but money will come. Right. Yes. Right. And that's, that's what this is. Out. And that's what this is. That's that's all about this. You know, that's what this topic is all about is health and wellness. And we're sitting here and we're talking about it because there is somebody that's listening or that will be listening. Excuse me. And Lord knows what it's going to do for their lives. And that's what matters to me is me. You know, when I said <laughs> I said before that when I first heard myself on the mic, I felt like throwing it. Mm-hmm. But when I realize that the words that I am saying that come from my head that could help somebody else can help change their lifestyle. Yeah. I realize I have to keep doing it. Yeah, no matter what. gifts for greater good. Right. Right. You know, honor and, your gifts. And yeah. that's one thing that I see within each and every one of you is you've put the nonsense to the side, whether it's been with the job, whether it's been with haters, and you keep pushing forward and inspiring Aaron for you to be super, super humble, share your your nightmare, to share where it is that you've come from, your visuals, from where you are in, in ideal shape. And Jay, for you to go through everything that you've gone through Mm -hmm. and, you know, for you to be an African-American male and to be called a sellout and step onto social media and stand up for who it is that you are in law enforcement and as a human being and as an African-American male, this is all God sent. Yeah, absolutely. And I thoroughly believe that. So I just wanted to bring that element up. I think spirituality is definitely, definitely a strong suit when it comes down to health and wellness. It, it, it definitely, um, in my personal opinion, I think that if you have that as a foundation, everything else will fall into place. Mm-hmm. I truly, truly believe that. But um, listen, guys, this episode, it, it's been great. It really has. Yeah, I had a solid time. And um, I mean, I wish we could keep going. But uh, if you guys just want to, we're just going to go around. If you just want to share your social media pages and where people can find you. All right. Um, you can find me on Instagram, the real Jumpman J. Spells as it sounds. Um, that's, the only, <laughs> that's the only thing I got right now. So cool, cool. You can find me on Instagram at no donuts here no. <laughs> <laughs> at huge underscore fat underscore loser. 
And uh, yeah, send me a message. Listen, if you have any questions about anything, yo, like John on the job, off the job, mental health, whatever, you're going through a rough patch, you'll never hesitate to message me. Anything you say to me, I'll take to the grave, like for real. That's it. Yeah. Same here, man. If you guys ever have anything, I'm no donuts here on Instagram. That's the main platform I'm on. I kind of got away from Facebook, but I'm pretty active on, on Instagram. No donuts here. And if you guys have any questions, anything on or off the job, um, you know, I'm try to keep up with DMs as best I can. I get I get a lot. Though. He gets a lot. Yeah. 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 Why'd you get away from Facebook? I know Aaron, he talked it's about just, that a little bit. It became such a toxic, toxic place. Toxic place, man. bro. Just, yep. Yeah, that's bro. that's the worst place facebook really? bro. yeah man because oh, man. you know what you'll get you'll get somebody like uh you went to high school with mm -hmm. come out of the woodworks mm -hmm. and say some really Very off true. the wall Very shit true. Yep. you're just like whoa right, right where did right, that right. come from right and he was just sitting in the you know in the bushes somewhere <laughs> waiting, waiting just to waiting. ambush you yeah. just waiting yeah yeah instagram's coming up that's <laughs> coming up quick though I know. oh yeah the toxicity yeah oh, man. Man. it's there it's, it's right there it's right there but it's still better way better yeah, yeah. it is yeah there's yeah. a lot more positivity on, on Instagram. There's For sure. A lot, of, a lot of people are trying to motivate other people and trying to put good stuff out there. And I think, you know, just like you do here, man, putting out good energy and good vibes is you'll 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 see the reciprocal effect on it. Cool, yep. cool. And uh, for Finest United, you can find us on Instagram at Finest United, also on Facebook and YouTube as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And uh, guys, let's make this clubhouse thing happen. Yeah, let's I'm do down. It. I'm let's down. I'll talk to uh, I'm in. I'll talk to my boy Frankie. Um, yeah, I could just plug him in real quick too. If you um, if you guys aren't following Reps for Responders, please do so. It's a non for profit organization. Yeah. Um, they really help uh, first responders and family of first responders, um, and um, you know, uh, military. So oh, he's a, yeah, Frankie's yeah. a man. For yeah. Frankie's a good dude. Stuff. He's got a very interesting story. Yep. Young guy, been through a lot. Um, but solid guy, heart of gold. So, yep. um, Does he have a podcast as well? Yeah, yeah inside the labyrinth. That's I do that with him. Oh, we had okay. uh, we had yeah. Mike on, we had Aaron on. So oh, awesome. You know, maybe we can make something happen. Mm -hmm. we'll do it in person. Let's do it. I got my own board, so we don't got to do all this like yeah, stuff. Sure. We can set it up. Yeah, you gotta teach me that. So we'll man. set that up. Great. We'll great, get that great. done. Actually, I'll talk to Frankie today about that. Really? Okay. Now, business ventures. I know you guys have other stuff going on as well. Please do not be shy. <clears throat> Do not be shy. Oh, uh, I mean, these guys probably got a lot more going on. Website, shirts, hoodies. You know? Yeah, I got yeah, a shirt. I got, a shirt. <laughs> I got a shirt from the guy. <laughs> yeah, I sell shirts and hoodies and stuff. Just something I've always like liked doing. Like I told you last time, I used to run a police charity, and yeah. uh, I just like designing sh shirts. As soon as I had the ability to do it, yeah, I I never thought I could start a business. There's one of those things I just like never thought I could do. Yeah. So I did that, and I also do uh, personal training, and I want to, like I said, I don't want the guy who wants to lose 20 pounds. I want the people who are hopeless. Right. And where can they find that? AaronLoman.com. Or my Instagram. Come my Instagram. Yeah. Cool. Same here, man. You can go to the link in my Instagram bio. It's MikeCoonahan.com. I do, you know, the shirt thing, um, first form, all that stuff. So if you have any questions. I got to get that tax number. DM me. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. That. I got so one for you, actually. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. definitely get that. Cool, cool, cool. Well, once again, this is your host, Lenny Bradley, and we're closing out episode 13. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. 